another day on the job site and this morning we are working on the electric trench and I'm gonna add a great stick right next to the corner so that we know how deep we need to have the trench. In the meantime, the excavator is getting on top of the edge and he's pulling off the topsoil so that then he can dig more of the kind of the sidewall because we want to have at least 10 foot uh, difference between kind of the wall and the building. And also we want to have a swale at the bottom so that any drainage issues can be solved. the transformer is going to be and we are preparing the base for the transformer mount so we need the 12 inches of crushed rock in here crush rock about halfway through so we'll compact it down before filling to the 12 inch mark. So if you couldn't tell from that, I have never used a plate compactor before. 
it's like a lawnmower. It kind of pulls itself forward, which I, I guess I wasn't expecting so much. And uh, I realized that pretty quick, but it's really worked. It, like, I wasn't sure what to expect, but this feels just, have you stood on here yet? Just stand on here. It feels really solid. It definitely, it's made a huge difference to that. And uh, so yeah, we'll go and get more, more fill. We've got about another six inches of uh, crushed rock to go in here to, uh, to get to the pipe we need. Okay, so foundation pad is ready, all compacted at the correct depth. We've just got the transformer pad ready. So what that means is we've installed this fiberglass shell that was provided by the electric company. This thing is about four foot wide by just under four feet in the other direction and about four feet tall as well. This is a shell that is being buried underground. You saw us putting down 12 inches of compacted crushed rock underneath for drainage. This then sits on top and the transformer itself is going to be located on top of this. The transformer is essentially where the primary service, the high voltage lines will come in, and the secondary service, which is the 120 slash 240 volt uh, secondary service comes out. And for a lot of people, they would have the transformer mounted up on the pole near their house if they have overhead service. And the reason we chose not to do that is because as soon as you switch from the high voltage to the lower voltage, the 240 volt, you can start to get voltage drop on that line, which means if you start to pull heavy loads off there, then your voltage can sag. It's more vulnerable to, to that with longer lines. So instead, we chose to get the transformer mounted as close as possible. Another big advantage of that is that the way you mitigate against voltage drop is by upsizing your wires. We're planning to have a 400 amp service and the wires you need for a long run of 400 amp service are really pretty hefty. Hefty means a lot of copper, a lot of copper I mean, or aluminum, and a lot of aluminum or copper means very expensive. So by putting the transformer pad here, we can run the smaller primary service wires in before switching over to the secondary service. It also means we can switch wire size and switch service at any point. That's important to be, uh, because to begin with, we're actually not going to be installing a 100 amp service. Trying to get the parts for a uh, 400 amp service are, it's basically impossible right now. So instead of the 400 amp service, we're going to be installing 100 amp service on a temporary backboard that we're gonna be mounting just down this trench. You can see there's a little deep spot there. That's where the backboard's gonna go. And while we're still living in the RV, that's totally fine. That gives us plenty of power. But once we have the utility building done, we wanna be able to put the 400 amp service in there. And that will then give us plenty of power for electric vehicles, for electric heating, electric hot water, anything like that that we want. We never have to worry then. 400 amp service is more than enough electricity. 
by having the transformer pad just here, maybe 30 feet from the utility building, we don't have any worries about voltage drop or anything. So the next steps on this now, we wanna get some of the conduit in. Specifically, there's a section over there near the, the pole as it comes across the road. We're a little bit worried about the depth there. We're gonna to have to see what we can do. So our contractor is gonna be jumping in the cat with a big rock hammer soon and trying to hammer out that section. Then we're gonna be able to put some sand in the bottom of that, assuming we get the depth and put the conduit in. Our plan then is to call the uh, utility company and have them come out and inspect the section that goes across the road and this transformer pad. Once they're happy with those, we can fill in that section across the road and basically reopen our driveway. We don't backfill this section around the transformer pad yet. Before we do that, they need to install a grounding grid, which is basically a copper loop that runs around this transformer pad. I'm not sure, it depends, I think, who comes out and inspects, whether they'll be able to do that at the time of inspection or they'll do that later. They may well just do that when they install the transformer. But either way, we've now got this transformer pad installed. When we do backfill, the fill, well actually the final grade, is about four inches below the, the top of this. So this fiberglass shell protrude by about four inches from the ground. So it just gives you a sense as you look at this, just how much fill we're adding around here, that that is only four inches above final grade. So a lot of work still to do here, but getting this in the ground was a big milestone. I'm really pleased with this. We've got it perfectly level, perfectly flat, and nicely compacted. So next up, we're gonna go and focus some things, uh, focus our attention on the pole, get some things ready over there. Meanwhile, the contractor's got some more trenching to do over here, but we didn't wanna do so we could get the tractor in to drop the crushed rock. Now that we're done here, he can, ex uh, he can open up that trench. Progress is being made. Well, today has been a really busy day and we have accomplished quite a lot. We made a lot more progress on the electrical trench. Um, the excavator has been hammering and pulling out uh, more stuff, but there's still more to do. Yeah, and today he's been doing a lot of work with the rock hammer on that excavator and kudos to him because he was saying that hammering with that is not a lot of fun. Not only does it shake the entire machine, it shakes him as well inside. So kudos to him for several hours of that. But it's been worth it because we have made a ton of progress and we've got a lot accomplished today. We got the, the transformer pad installed. We actually, just after we got that, maybe 20 minutes after <laughs> we got that installed, we had a visitor turned up and it was an impromptu visit from the electrical company. The, uh, the guy we've been working with, who is essentially the person inspecting uh, a lot of the work, it's either going to be him or one of the linemen uh, checking things, he just turned up just to see how we were getting on. And we were able to show him what we'd achieved here and what we were up to and how we were getting on with the conduit. And he said this is one of the tidiest and best looking installs he's seen. we also um, been asking him the most questions. He says other people don't typically pay attention to this much detail. Yeah, we, I think if, you, if you're an electrician and you've been doing this for years, you know how to do it. You, you've just kind of... You, you've got your routine, you know what people are looking for, and you just get on and do it. We're using the specification as kind of like a, a how-to manual. We're following to the letter exactly what's required, making sure we at least meet, if not exceed, every single requirement in there. And there's some things in there that as we're going through, they're not maybe contradictory, but they are maybe not very clear, or there's just very specific things we're trying to work out. A good example of that is when we installed that transformer pad uh, shell, the, the fiberglass shell, it's not perfectly square, and the hole on top is rectangular. So the transform itself must be a rectangular. And so we want to know which way do we need to orient it so that the front of the transformer is facing in this direction. Yeah. And, uh, and so things like that have just been lots of questions for him. But again, credit to him, he's been fantastic, been really, really easy to work with. And, uh, and we really appreciate that. And all the practice of first putting the cross rock under the septic tank and now putting it under the transformer, that's just practice <laughs> for when we'll have to do it under the uh, slab for the utility building. Yeah. And probably in the house in the future too. Because when they excavate, our rocks are so large, they pull out really large rocks. So you can't really excavate at a certain a depth. Smooth surface. So it... And, and, and like the variation in the bottom is really deep. It might yeah. be three feet lower in some places than we want it just because a rock that was five feet wide came yeah. out of that spot. Yeah, so we'll need to do a lot of uh, fill with crushed rock under the side. Yeah. So we got the transformer pad in. Another thing we got done today, maybe not as significant a progress, but we got our first ground rod or the, the grounding electrode to be specific uh, installed. 
And I say first, because we do need to install two of those. The first one we're able to install, the second one we've just got a little bit more hammering to do uh, on this side trench here before we can uh, put things in there. But our contract is going to start with that in the morning. Fingers crossed, I've got to go and pick up some supplies and hopefully by the time I'm back, we should be pretty much ready to start getting things done here. And there's a lot of progress we're hoping to make tomorrow. We should be able to get all of the conduit uh, in this area done that we need to to get the backboard, the electrical backboard installed. Mm -hmm. And that's a temporary thing just until we have the utility building. We're putting in this 100 amp service on a backboard. For me, that is gonna be a huge milestone. Uh, I've been really looking forward to get that, that in. It will mean we have good receptacles, good connections there. Yeah, but the first priority will be to hammer out the trench along the driveway, to put in the conduit there so that we can have the electric company come out and inspect it. And then we can <laughs> close out uh, the, uh, the trench and we can start driving up again on it. Yeah, inspections I should say around here, the electrical inspections that are being done are only done by the utility company and they're only inspecting essentially up to the transformer and meter socket. They don't care about anything past that point really. They're also being done by either our, our kind of uh, site designer, I guess you'd call him, uh, or one of the line crew, which means they can come out at really short notice. They're super happy for us to call and say, hey, can you come out later on today and take a look? So, and they're also happy to come out multiple times. It's yeah. not like there's fixed points where we have it, have to have everything on a checklist done before they'll yeah. come out. So we can do the driveway portion, inspect that, then and cover it up, cover it up, and then work on the rest of it. So that's really exciting. I'm I'm so happy with what we achieved today. The process is interesting. Like we we kind of had our thoughts of like where the conduit and where it's gonna go, but then once you're actually digging it, and when you run into rocks and and different depths, then some of the stuff we might change on the fly or actually come up with a better route. And then we went through our trenches that are dug up. We measured very carefully to make sure that we have all the parts, all the conduit. Uh, all the lengths that we need and all the 45s or all the fittings or and angles and things yeah. so yeah and then another thing we accomplished today um with the well so uh, you can see the well behind me there we had the well drilled but they didn't install the pitless adapter so the pitless adapter is a little connection on the side of the well where eventually the pipe from the well will come up go into that fitting and that'll come out the side of the well, not out of the top. And that way it'll stay underground the entire way and protected from frost. Short term, we're going to be actually putting the, the pipe up through the top, uh, through the well seal, just until we have the building because we have nowhere for the other end of that pipe connected to the pitless adapter to go. But we do want to get that pitless adapter installed. So we managed to excavate that today, uh, which means we've got the pitless adapter so we can install that whenever we're ready now. Yeah, so good progress today and hopefully will be more good progress tomorrow. Things are starting to happen at last. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.